While the gubernatorial races have dominated headlines during this primary season, they are not the only primary races. A contentious Democratic primary is going on in the Attorney General's race, and we're beginning to see more noise from the candidates running for Congress in the 6th and 2nd Congressional District Democratic primaries. Uh, David, from the down-ballot uh, primaries, take your pick. What, what uh, is the most surprising or at least most entertaining battle so far to you? Well, in my view, one of the maybe the best campaign commercial produced this year in the entire country has to be uh, Levi Tillerman, who's the underdog in the Democratic primary for the 6th Congressional District to challenge Mike Kaufman, because it, it has Tillerman getting gassed in the face with, with bear spray and then re reacting. Um, and, and yes, if, if you get an up-close shot with that and you don't have immunities like it, eating a lot of hot food or uh, you know, having enough drugs in your system to have countervailing effects, it is certainly a, a temporarily disabling thing. Tillerman's point is we should, instead of teachers having firearms, let's give them all bear spray. I, I think there's actually situations in which a bit, it could be fine for, and good for somebody to have a bear spray. And there's plenty of teachers who wouldn't want to carry a gun, but since bear spray is non-lethal, maybe they'd want to carry that, so fine for them. But it is also true that uh, firearms are have a larger range among other things so it depends on on where you are whether bear spray will do you any good um, on the democrat on the democratic uh, ag primary joe salazar has the great advantage of having the, the same name as two very popular moderate democrats from our recent past ken salazar and his his brother uh... john salazar and and uh, also, Joe Salazar, no relation to those two, have, does have a strong and enthusiastic left-wing volunteer base. Phil Weiser, the dean of C Law School, has got m much more money, um, but very far behind in the polls. Um, I, I will say one of Salazar's advantages is, at least he's been a state representative, he can work in a building that has Republicans in it, um, whereas Weiser at CU Law School has made fairly sure he doesn't ever have to face that kind of experience. <laughs> To, to your bear spray point, somewhere Betsy DeVos is smiling, saying, I told you bears were a problem. <laughs> uh, Eric, when you look at the non-governor's races, uh, what are the headlines that you're seeing that people need to know? I'll try to be quick here. Uh, two races are going to uh, attract my interest come Tuesday night. One is the Democratic race for attorney general. You have one candidate, Phil Weiser, with all the Democratic establishment support, all the money. And then you have Joe Salazar with that left base, the excitement of the Bernie crowd, and the last name. Uh, even though it's a last name of, I think, only a distant, distant relationship, if any relationship. Uh, if there's going to be an upset, that could be an upset. And then the second one, your question mentioned Congressional District 2 and 6. I'm actually more focused on Congressional District 1, the Diana DeGette, Sayura Rao race. I don't think there's an upset brewing. I don't think Sayura Rao is going to dislodge Diana DeGette, but I think she's going to give her a scare. And I think it is going to be a closer margin. I think Rao's number will start with, uh, I would guess, a four and maybe into the mid fours. Uh, I could be totally wrong on this, but I think there is a message that is going to be sent even in losing in that race. Natasha, we're talking about congressional races. Do uh, Jason Crow and Joe Neguse, who seem to be the front runners both in the second congressional district and the sixth congressional district, are the races wrapped up or is there a potential upset brewing somewhere? <laughs> no, nothing is wrapped up. There are potential um, uh, upheaval in all of these races. I mean, to borrow from Game of Thrones, the candidates are coming, or, or more appropriately, the candidates are already here. That's what's <laughs> unique about this race is that the, the, this election is that there's so many people on the ballot. So um, yes, we pay attention to those big ticket statewide races, but all the way down, all those state race, House races, the state Senate races, those those are going to be um, very impacted by the unaffiliated voters. And I think that that's the thing that we don't know what will occur yet. What we do know is that in some of those big races, um, say in a, in a more recent Republican governor's race, there was a 40,000 um, vote difference between the first place and the fourth place person. So when we're talking about the number of ballots that have already been turned in by unaffiliated voters, could those have a huge impact in a House race? Absolutely. So are the candidates the White Walkers or the unaffiliates the White Walkers? I'll, I'll let you decide. <laughs> all right, all right, good. This is a Game of Thrones metaphors on card and side out. You, you just can't beat it. Patty, wrap it up for us. Uh, Non-governor's races in the primary, what do we need to know? 
I think Salazar is going to take that. It's interesting. You can tell how much trouble Weiser's in because Hickenlooper, who hasn't endorsed in the gubernatorial race, came out and endorsed him. And I think people are concerned that he is way too far behind. I think Joe Salazar would do a perfectly fine job. I think um, in District 2, really interesting how much support there is. You know, people are fighting the goose. I mean, it seems like a really kind of grassroots effort, just judging by the number of letters I've gotten. But I think the goose has it. And despite the fact that the bear spray, he didn't shoot himself in the face, but I think he shot himself in the foot on that one. <laughs> he got a lot of attention, but Jason Crow is still going to take that.